Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to avoid bad things happening in your life. How to avoid having outcomes that are not desirable to you. Now, I'm gonna get a little bit esoteric in this video, so, you know, if that scares you, then, then you don't have to watch this. But what I would uh, highly recommend to, to you is that you not, not take anything I say is true or false, that you listen with an open mind, and instead of just either believing me or, or rejecting what I have to say, instead, you actually put this to the test. You give it a try and see what happens. You, you try this for a little while, and I think that some of you are going to be very pleasantly surprised. Now, I'm making this video in response to one of my Remote Jobs Bootcamp students, who has, uh, is getting a job, or he, he's had an interview that went very well, and he believes that he's gonna get this job. And so he sent me an email saying that he's gonna get this job, but he's really worried about getting fired, and he wanted to know if I could tell him how to not get fired. And so I thought this was a great opportunity to show not only how to avoid getting fired, but also how to avoid any, any future outcome that you do not want in your life. So maybe it's getting fired, maybe it's your business failing, maybe it's your relationship failing, maybe it's getting sick. You know, just anything that could happen that would be bad, uh, how to avoid having that happen for you. And so to show you this, I, I want to go really down to the fundamentals of the, uh, the, the basis of how reality works. This is how I think of reality, is this drawing here, it's a, a dot matrix, where you have um, the y-axis here is, is going from bad to good. So, uh, you know, down here is, is the worst possible outcome, up here is the best, and in here is the middle. And then, as you go across from left to right, this is time, so as time passes, uh, you go this way through the dot matrix. And so everybody gets one path, uh, right? So let's say that you start right in the middle here. And you say you go, you, you just stay in the middle for a while, and then maybe you get, you get a promotion, and then maybe you lose your job, and then maybe you get married, and then, you know, maybe you get sick. This is what your life looks like, that you're, you're going through this this combination of possible realities, and at each point in time, you get, your life actualizes just one of these possible realities. So right here you have, uh, you know, in my description, seven possible realities. And in reality, this would be like an infinite number, but just for the sake of simplicity. And so at each point in time, you only get to manifest one of these. Only one of these is the reality that you experience. And, you know, you could, if, if you get more esoteric with this, you could say that all of these points are equally real, but you only get to experience one of them at each point in time. And so, of course, this begs the question, how do you determine which points you go to? How do you make your life better? How do you go this direction instead of going this direction? Or, or how do you, you know, stay the same? And so the most obvious answer to that would be, well, it depends on your choices. It depends on the actions that you take. Right, so if you if you work hard, then your your life is probably going to get better. Whereas if you start smoking crack, your life's probably going to get worse. Uh, and so the the most basic answer to that question is the choices you make. But I want to go a little deeper and and get into what actually underlies those choices. Why do you make the choices that you make? I mean, a lot of people make really bad choices that they know are bad choices, and for some reason they feel this compulsion to make them anyway. I mean, there's probably not a single person in the universe who starts smoking crack thinking that it's a good idea, and yet there are millions of people that smoke crack. Why is that? Well, what I've found and what, what I've experienced is that whether you go up or down here, what, what underlies those decisions is where you choose to set your focus. And so let's start over in this, so just to illustrate. So let's say that you start here, you start right in the middle, your, your life's not really good and it's not really bad. It's just totally average, totally neutral. Um, and then you, you go straight from, from this point to this point. And so at this point, your life's totally average, and then the next point in time, nothing's changed. Your life is still completely average. Well, for most people, this is the, uh, the, the trajectory of their life. Right? They go just like this. Nothing ever changes. Nothing gets better, nothing gets worse. And the reason for this is that 
Uh, the current point is a very powerful point of attraction because it's what you see around you, right? If you focus on what is, if you focus on the current experience that you are having, then your focus is on this level and you will continue to go along this level and nothing will ever change. This is what most, where most of humanity is. This is why the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor because their mental focus is on the things that they already see around them. They're on their current experience. And so if your current experience is what you put your attention on, then the future turns out to be very much like the present. Nothing changes. So that's, that's what happens for most people. But let's take the case of somebody who's constantly living in fear. Someone who is always afraid that some horrible thing is going to happen. Somebody who is uh, constantly imagining a, a future that is not beneficial to them. Imagining they get fired, for example. And by the way, the, the human imagination is an amazing ability that we have that, that most people don't really understand. You know, if you think about what is imagination, well, imagination is the ability to create in your mind's eye a future that has not yet made itself manifest, a future that you have not and are not experiencing. It is an ability to see the future, really. But if you subscribe to this theory of, of how reality works, there is an A future. There are basically infinite possible futures. And so through your imagination, you have the ability to transport yourself there and thus orient yourself towards that particular future. And so this can be helpful or it can be horrible, depending on how you use it. So for example, let's take the person who lives in fear, right? Say this person has a decent job. They're, they're you know, not good, not bad. They're right in the middle. Their life's totally average. They have a decent job and, you know, they're getting by and they're not really in any, any risk of getting fired, but they're also not really doing a great job. They're not going to get promoted. They're just going to stay in their current position forever if they continue following this trajectory. Well, if that person gets in their mind that, uh, that they, maybe they're going to get fired and they're afraid of getting fired and they're thinking about getting fired. Well, what are they doing? They're, they're focusing on going down, right? They're focusing on the, on the life getting worse. They're focusing on the outcome that they do not want. And as a result, chances are the life is going to get worse, right? Because where you put your attention is where your future moves, right? This is putting your attention on this future is choosing this future essentially. And the fact that you don't want it, the fact that you're afraid of it and you don't want it, doesn't really factor into the equation. Whether you want it or whether you don't want it doesn't matter. The fact is that's what you're focused on. And this is something that, uh, that, that most of us, I think, intuitively understand. And you can, you can test this in, in various ways. I mean, just kind of the normal physical world. So for example, if you try to walk in a straight line, but you focus on something that's off to your right, uh, it's going to be very difficult to walk in a straight line. You're going to start veering off to the right at some point. Or, you know, if you play tennis, they tell you to, when, when you're about to hit the ball, you focus on the spot where you want the ball to go, uh, right? Because that's going to make it more likely that it goes to the place it's supposed to go. Or if you're, if you're uh, rock climbing, what do they tell you? They tell you, don't look down, right? You look up, you look at the place that you want to go and you look at the, the handholds that are going to get you there. You do not look down at possible impending death, right? You, in just about any endeavor, where you put your focus determines uh, where you go. Really, it determines your subsequent actions, even if you don't intend for it to. So whatever point you're at, you have the choice of which point you choose to go to in the future. You have the choice through the direction of your intention. So let's say, uh, let's just take it from here and say this person who is at this point learns what I am teaching in this video and decides, okay, instead of looking down, I'm going to start looking up. I'm going to start thinking about maybe getting a better job than the one that I just got fired from. Um, and so when they're looking up, let's say it's this point, they're looking all the way up at this point, And then when they are looking up at that point, when they have their attention focused on that, that possible outcome that is desirable to them, then the means of getting there 
by some, some method that, that none of us really understand, just come to him. You know, I said in an earlier video that success equals motivation plus information. You have to know how to get to the place and you have to have the motivation to actually put in the action to get there. And where that particular information comes from in order to get there is not something that we understand very well. Right? We have a sudden burst of inspiration. We have an idea. Uh, uh, the method for getting to the place we want just comes to us. It's, it's like it's just given to us on a silver platter from God or from the angels or from the universe or something. It just comes to us. And so uh, what I am submitting to you is that the place that that comes from or, or your ability to get that kind of information that's going to get you to the place that you want to be depends on where your attention is focused. And if your attention is focused up here on making your life better, then that inspiration, that idea is going to come to you, that you are going to receive that information that is necessary for raising your life to the next level. And so, if you were focused on that next level, you get the information, you're probably feeling excited, you're probably feeling energized, right? Because you're imagining this good feeling. So you get the information and you get the motivation and then voila, you end up going to that higher level. And so once you learn how to do this, you just keep going up, right? You learn how to go to a higher level and so you, you keep every, every segment, you don't instead of just observing your reality or instead of being afraid of, of going down, you just keep on looking up and you keep on climbing and your life keeps getting better and better and better. And of course this chart, you know, in reality is infinite. It's not just seven by seven. So as time goes on, your life just gets better and better and better when you learn this. And uh, you know, if you're looking up, then there's just no worry of going down at all. And so what I told my student who is worried about getting fired, what I told him was, is don't think about getting fired, think about getting promoted, right? Think about the outcome that's gonna make your life better. Think about what you want to happen. Um, and then, you know, the, the getting fired is just gonna be irrelevant. And his answer to that actually was that I, you know, if you try to not think about something, or if you try to stop thinking about something, that's, it's difficult, right? You, if I tell you stop thinking about something, then it's probably gonna make, or if you try to stop thinking about something, it's probably gonna make you think about it even more, right? And so I thought, yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. And so I, I didn't really phrase that very well. What I should have said was that instead of uh, trying not to think about something, instead recognize, catch yourself when you are thinking about the thing that is gonna make your life worse, or even keep your life the same. Recognize when you were thinking in that way, and then, consciously uh, refocus your attention on the thing that is up, right? I'm not telling, in, in this case, I'm not telling you to stop thinking about something. I'm telling you to switch that thought to something else, I'm telling you to replace it with something, uh, right? And so that's something that, that you absolutely can do. And the more you do it, you kind of develop the habit of just doing it naturally. And so your life goes up and up and up and up without you really even having to think about it. So I would highly recommend that you give this a try. Now, I know probably some of you guys are thinking, yeah, okay, that's great and all, but what about the bad things that you can't avoid, right? There, there are bad things that are going to happen to us uh, in some way that are just, that, that we can't get around, right? I mean, loved ones dying, for example. Pretty much all of us experience somebody who we love dies because we're all human, we're all mortal, we're all gonna die someday, so that's something that we have to deal with. And so, um, it, it, I would, what I would say to that is, in addition to this framework that I've given you right here, something that's going to actually make this even more powerful is to recognize that everything that happens to us is actually for our benefit. That just because something feels bad in the moment or just because something seems bad doesn't mean that in the grand scheme of things it actually is bad. The truth is that we have a very limited perspective being actors in the play here uh, and, and we can't really properly assess whether something is, is good or bad. And so I can give you a few examples of that. For example, I mean, with the loved one dying, uh, we think that death is bad because it's painful to us. You know, if, if your loved one dies, you miss that person. It's, it's very difficult. But in the grand scheme of things, is that really a bad thing? 
And the, the true answer, of course, is no, that we all die for a reason and that death is not a bad thing, that death is just going home. It's just, you know, this life is like a day at the office and death is going back home after your day at the office. And so if somebody else goes home, that's not a bad thing. You know, you're separated from them for a few years, but you have all of eternity to, to be with that person again. It's, it's really not bad. And the fact that that person is getting to, um, you know, leave after a productive day at the office is not a bad thing in any way, shape, or form. It just feels like it in the moment. And then another consideration, too, is that painful situations are usually what is required to break us out of our negative patterns, right? I mean, if we, if we go back here, we think about somebody who is, uh, let's say, descending into alcoholism. They start drinking, and then they lose their job, and then they lose their wife, and then, uh, you know, their kids abandon them, and, and, they're, and maybe they're at the worst point in their life, and they're, they're you know, sleeping in a pile of their own vomit on the, on the highway, uh, under a bridge somewhere, um, you know, this is like rock bottom. Well, some people need that experience. They need that rock bottom experience to finally wake up and say, hey, this is not what I want for my life anymore. They need that painful uh, awakening to show them that this is not the, the right way to go, that they need, something needs to change. And we could say, okay, this is a bad experience, but in the grand scheme of things, in this person's life as a whole, is this a bad experience? Well, if this is what gets them to start going up again, then no, it wasn't a bad experience. In fact, if this gets them up here, when they started out down here, even though you know they had to go through some pain for a while, then this was a wonderful thing. In the grand scheme of things, this was painful, but it got them to the point that they're at now. This is not a bad thing at all. This is exactly what they needed. And so if we can recognize this, if we can have the humility to recognize that we don't, we don't understand the full situation, right? We just do not have enough information to be able to say that something is good or bad, right? If we have the humility to recognize that, and at the same time, the faith that God is in control and that everything ultimately is to our benefit, then we can see every single situation that's happening in our lives as for our benefit. And so all of a sudden, when we see reality, when we look at the world around us, instead of just seeing stagnation, we are actually seeing growth. We are, uh, we are envisioning a future that's better for us, and so we're oriented towards, uh, towards the higher place in that way. And we are also seeing the present as being building us for a better future. And so we are basically doubling the power of this upward trajectory of motion. So that is how you avoid bad things happening and that's how you make your life better. You constantly visualize the next step in the process. You constantly visualize you being in a higher place than you were before. And when something happens in the present, whether good or bad, you know, whether it feels good or bad, let's say, you conceptualize how it could be good. You think about it as something good, whether it's a, something that is, is clearly good, like you, you get a raise or you get a promotion, or something that feels painful but might be an impetus towards a higher place. If you will frame everything that happens to you as a good thing, while at the same time imagine the, imagining the future as being better than today, then you are going to have absolutely immense power and your life is going to get better blindingly fast. And again, don't take my word for it. Try this. Try it for a few months and see what happens. I think you'll be very happy with the results. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe and the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my new videos when they come out. Uh, leave me a comment with your feedback. Share this video if you think it could be beneficial to somebody else. Um, and, and also, if you haven't already, I got a little free gift for all my YouTube followers. That is the Eight Daily Habits for Success, Happiness, and Spiritual Fulfillment, a little mini ebook that I give away for free as kind of a thank you for supporting me on YouTube. So you can get that at the link in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you would also really enjoy this video as well.